Hello viewers and subscribers of this channel. In this video tutorial, we will learn how to characterize a transient response of a dynamical system. We will learn what are peak time, settling time, rise time, overshoot and percent overshoot. Before I start, here are a few comments. Those of you who are watching my video know by now that I always create a post that nicely summarizes everything that I will explain in this video. This post contains all the explanations, definitions, and equations. A link to this post is given in the description below. Then, I would like to emphasize that it took me a significant amount of time to create this video and the post that you can see over here. Consequently, I kindly ask you to press the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you very much. Before we start, let us first explain the significance of the topic that is presented in this video. Well, we often specify the desired system behavior in terms of peak time, settling time, rise time, or percent overshoot. Consequently, it is very important to precisely define the values of these parameters and to understand them properly. Apart from this, as you will learn in my future videos and tutorials, we can also relate damping, natural frequency, bandwidth, and some other parameters and properties of dynamical systems with the values of peak time, settling time, rise time, and percent overshoot. Okay, so let's start. As a test case, in this video, we will consider a second-order dynamical system whose transfer function is given by the equation 1. The first step is to simulate such a system in MATLAB. This is how we compute the step response in MATLAB. First, we need to define the parameters of our system. There are two parameters that uniquely define our system. The first parameter is the parameter zeta, that's often called the damping ratio, and another parameter is the parameter omega n, and that parameter denotes the natural undamped frequency. Now, using these two parameters and the MATLAB function tf, we can uniquely determine the transfer function. And here is our transfer function. And these coefficients are basically shown in my previous slide. Now, here you should keep in mind that this is a prototype version of a transfer function. Here you can also play it with zeta and omega n if you want, for example, to have different system response. For example, if you want to have a more oscillatory response, you will basically decrease zeta because zeta is the damping ratio. However, if you want to have a more damped response, you will increase zeta. Okay, so we use the MATLAB function step to compute the step response, and finally, we can plot the result. And here's our plot. We can see a nicely damped step response. First, let us define the settling time. Basically, the settling time, that's usually denoted by Ts, is defined as the time required for the transient response to enter and stay within plus minus 2% of the steady state or final value. Okay, so let us focus on this graph that it nicely explains the settling time. In order to properly understand this definition, we first need to properly identify the steady state or final value. Okay, so let us follow our step response. The step response goes like this and it settles over here. So this value is our YSS or the steady state or final value. Okay, that was easy. Now, how about this limit? Plus minus 2%. Well, to construct this limit, we basically take our steady state or final value and we offset it for plus 2% and minus 2%. Basically, we create a tunnel. 
The limits of the tunnel are 1.02 YSS and 0.98 YSS. Now let us go back and read our definition once more. Basically, the settling time, TS, is defined as the time required for the transient response to enter and stay. This is very important to keep in mind. Enter and stay within plus minus 2% of the steady state or final value. Okay, so let, let us try to find the settling time. Again, we are following our step response. The step response goes like this. And immediately, we can observe that we are entering the tunnel. However, this is not the settling time because as we go further, we can observe that we are exiting the tunnel. So this is not basically the settling time. Okay, where is the next candidate for the settling time? It is over here. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so let's see what happens in the future. So basically, we are going further, 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 further. And over here, we are exiting just for maybe 0.001, but we are still exiting over here, our tunnel, right? So even this point is not... The settling time. However, immediately after this exit, we enter again in the tunnel, and if we follow the step response further, we can observe that we always stay in the tunnel. Consequently, this value over here is our settling time. Next, let us define the peak time. The peak time denoted by TP is defined as the time required for the system to reach the maximum overshoot. Okay, so this definition is relatively straightforward. We just need to identify the peak that's given over here and the time it takes to reach this peak basically is our peak time. So this definition was super easy. Next, we define the rise time. The rise time is the time required for the system response to go from 10 to 90% of its final value or steady state value. So let us try to illustrate and understand the rise time. Again, here is our step response. And we are basically looking at the time required for the system to go from 10% of the steady state value to 90% of the steady state value. And on this graph, this is the time TR. And finally, we define the overshoot and percentage overshoot. Basically, the overshoot denoted by MP is defined by the equation number 2. Y of TP is the maximum of the step response and YSS is the steady state or final value. Here is the graphical representation of the overshoot MP. Basically, from this graph, we can also see that MP is equal to Y of TP and TP is the maximum of our step response minus YSS. So, again, to find the overshoot, we first identify the maximum of the step response and we basically subtract YSS from this maximum. The percentage overshoot is defined by dividing the overshoot by the final value or the steady state value and multiplying the result by 100%. Here, we have to mention that in some control theory books, the overshoot is often called the maximum overshoot. And similarly, the percentage overshoot is also called the maximum percentage overshoot. So please keep these things in mind while studying some other material. As a final word, I have to mention the following. Basically, we have defined the settling time, the rise time, and other parameters by assuming a second order system. Now, the first question that you might ask me is, why did we assume a second-order system? 
Well, the reason is very simple. We can easily derive analytical expressions that relate settling time, rise time, and other parameters with dumping ratio and natural frequency. And these equations and these relations, that is, these functions, are very convenient and useful for designing dynamical systems and controllers for dynamical systems. So, again, second-order systems enable us to easily derive analytical expressions relating settling time, rise time, and other parameters with frequency response characteristics. That is, with bandwidth, natural frequency, damping ratio, and other parameters. However, for third-order systems, derivation of these analytical expressions becomes more complex, maybe even impossible. However, we can still use the notion of settling time, rise time, peak time, and other properties that characterize the transit response, because many responses of higher order systems can be actually approximated by a response of a second order system. Okay, that would be all for today. I hope that you like this video. If you like the videos I create, please subscribe and support my channel. Thank you very much and have a nice day.